This is AEDT 2150U Digital Technologies and Advanced Teaching Methods. And this is the second of the video capsules that we will be using to discuss social constructivist teaching. In the first video, we looked at the social constructivist teaching approach and we discussed how, according to social constructivist theorists, learning starts with social interactions and then moves to an intrapersonal process that internalizes new knowledge and skills. Communities of practice are an instance of social constructivist learning and teaching. According to Wenner, communities of practice are groups of people who share a concern or a passion for some things they do and learn how to do it better as they interact regularly. So, have you ever had something that you did or wished you were able to do or that you would like to learn more about how to get better at? Hmm. Well, I had. I wanted to learn how to use Articulate, an e-learning authoring uh, software to create my courses. I also wanted to learn how to skateboard as a reply to a challenge my friend once threw at me. While I tell you about my two experiences, I will invite you to reflect on the following analysis questions. How do communities of practice come alive? What are the roles plays, played by the members of a community of practice? How does learning happen in communities of practice? Do community of practice members need to be active in order to learn? And why? Can one transfer learning developed in communities of practice of practices to real life situations? Justify. Back to my two experiences. While learning how to use articulate was a success, learning how to skateboard was a disaster. So let me start with my first and successful story. When I decided to learn how to use Articulate, I downloaded the software and went through the videos presented on the website. After that, I was good to go. I started building my course, inserting my slides, creating animations, and working on the interactivity to better engage my students. While I was navigating the Articulate site, I discovered eLearning Heroes. eLearning Heroes was the name given to the Articulate community. This community had free tutorials, course downloads, and an expert advice page. It had a blog with information, tips, questions, answers, and comments. It had a showcase where members of the community shared the projects they did with Articulate. The community also shared a forum, a Facebook page, tweets, and other. According to the community site, eLearning Heroes reached over 107 1,816 active e-learning professionals who interacted, discussed new techniques, asked questions, and got fast answers. In fact, when I was stuck with a function or needed ideas about how to use a certain tool, I used to navigate the discussions held in this community forum, and 80% of the time I found my answers through members' similar issues and questions. After a while, I decided to join the community and started to interact with its members. I asked and answered few of the questions. As I was becoming more and more experienced and knowledgeable about the software, I started to share my experiences and responded to advice seekers. Today, I'm an active member of this community and I benefit from the knowledge I construct while interacting with its members. I sometimes think I learn as much from answering questions as I do from asking them. Let me now tell you about my disastrous skateboarding experience. Well, it started when a friend of mine told me, hey, we're having a skateboarding party school reunion at the skate park in a few months. You should come along with us. It was a joke, but I said to myself, why not? I used to see my son skateboarding a few years ago, and it seemed fun. To start, I looked at skateboarding for dummies YouTube videos. They walked me through essential steps to follow in order to get on board, discover my preferred stance, and start pushing with my left leg to move. Then I had to watch how to stand still on the board, keep my balance, turn the board, and even do ollies. I managed to stand on the board, but moving with it terrified me. Thinking about jumping with a skateboard was out of the question. Things were getting so complicated, so I said to myself, well, I managed to learn how to use Articulate, Maybe I should search for a skateboard community, seek their advice, and learn from their own experiences how to control my fears and move with the skateboard. I found the skatercafe.com site where 
members interacted on blogs and chat cafe. They also shared their skateboarding pictures in albums. I also joined the Skateboard UK forum with its 8,660 members who discussed every possible topic regarding skateboarding, such as how to buy your first board, which shoes were the best, how to kick flip, how to do ollies, and more. They also had a beginner guide, so I went through many of the posts. I learned about the bearings, the grid tape, the mounting hardware, the bushings, and much more, but I was never able to move the skateboard. One evening, my son returned home and saw the skateboard in the get rid of box. As I told him about my bad and unsuccessful idea of learning to skateboard, he reminded me that when he started skateboarding, he used to spend hours with his skateboarding expert friend, Arthur, in the skate park practicing and practicing and practicing before he actually started to feel comfortable on his board and eventually do his ollies. I'm an example of many social media users who have particular interest and seek to learn more about them through interacting with other users, experts in the topic, or simply sharing the same passion. We form a community of practice which acts as, living, as a living curriculum for the apprentice and involves activities conducted constructively and collaboratively that go from seeking information to looking for experiences, solving problems, discussing development, mapping knowledge, and identifying gaps, and much more. Members of a community of practice all have different levels of participation. While some are fully engaged in enhancing the community's knowledge, experiences, and skills, and learning at the same time, others start by peripheral activities. They observe and analyze other members' behaviors, reactions, and feedbacks, and evaluate the proposed information without really interacting with the community till they get familiarized with its members and ongoing activities and become confident to intervene. Then they move from legitimate peripheral participation into full participation. During the peripheral phase, many users are engaged in inner speech described by Vygotsky as higher thoughts that help, helps them focus, process deeply, evaluate, and plan. According to Werner, a community of practice is far from being a group of friends discussing the latest movie they saw. The synthesis questions. In your opinion, why do members of communities of practice use simultaneously a variety of digital technologies, such as blogs, forums, chats, Facebook pages, or other social media platforms to interact with each other? How does a socio or social constructivist approach apply in communities of practice? What are the advantages and limitations of communities of practice? Yeah.